The first step to reaching your full potential is having the courage to start. At Strayer University, we help students take action by making higher education more affordable with access to up to 10 no-cost gen ed courses. Because our goal is helping you work toward yours. So you can always keep striving. Visit strayer.edu to learn more. No-cost gen ed provided by Strayer University affiliate Sophia Learning. Eligibility rules apply. Connect with us for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. Laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, believe it by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago on WOLZ? Well, many have said they missed the show. And guess what? They're back. Welcome to the BJ and Bill podcast. Welcome to BJ and Bill. We are up to episode 30. Wow. As I like to say, season two, episode six. Six. That's awesome. That's awesome. No, we're on our second season. season, episode six. Gosh. It's crazy out there. It really is. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. If you'd like to get in touch, I have noticed a lot going on, and I don't think it's you, and I know it's not me. I have noticed a lot going on on the Facebook page. Lots of comments and lots of so keep up the great work, everybody. If you want to find us on Facebook, just uh, surf on over and uh, type in BJ and Bill podcast on your Facebook little search there, or by now you've probably got it bookmarked or saved or whatever it is you do. BJ and Bill podcast. And the email address is the same BJ and Bill, BJ, A N D, Bill podcast at gmail.com. Get in touch with your stories, memories, remembrances, insults, whatever you'd like to send. <laughs> uh, hopefully not the insult, hopefully not insults, but you never know. You never know. I'm used to them. Yeah, really. I was so just what's noticing new? what's that? Oh no! Oh, you're noticing the the, the pictures wall? behind you. Uh, the 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 brand new BJ and uh, BJ house. I sh- I was gonna say BJ and Bill. The brand new BJ and Susan house is getting well decorated, and there's like a wall of pictures behind him that I can see, folks. And one of them caught my eye. It was a black and white headshot with a lot of hair and a beard and mustache and very very what seventies eighties. How far uh, back does it go? Probably not probably well yeah, probably eighties, late eighties, nineties. That's when I first got into the world of stand-up comedy. That was my very first headshot. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Might and have also, to put that if you on notice the page. up there, there's also one of uh, me and my pig that I got reserve grand champion at the Pulaski County Fair. Wow. Yeah, I see all I, I see the pig. I don't see you. You're probably in somewhere yeah, small I'm, in that picture yeah i probably only weighed like 60 pounds in that picture <laughs> and now that you and you and the pig have changed places what's up with that yeah no kid no 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 we haven't changed places because that pig is bacon somewhere and been been probably completely eaten by now no no bacon left from that pig no he's long gone he's <laughs> he's he, we we honor him for his service and his and his bacon so there you go awesome how you, you doing know, I, we we almost but we didn't do it. What's we that? We almost did a little switcheroonie. My brother also was in 4-H. Right. And we both showed, you know, he showed cattle. I never showed cattle because they were a little bit bigger and tougher. And I was too little to lead them around the ring when I was, you know, in 4-H. But we were both in the swine. That's pigs. The, the swine division. Right, right, right. And mine got reserve grand champion. He went to the uh, the state fair because he was older. right. And my parents said, you know what? I mean, we never did it. I just want to go on record saying we never did it, but we talked about it. We're switching out the two pigs oh. so he could take my pig oh. to the state fair since it won, you know, the reserve grand champion at the fair. We thought, well, we might have a better chance of, you know, so state the fair. way they judge them and everything. It was like a good pig. <laughs> this wasn't a bad pig. It just wasn't. <laughs> It just wasn't as good as my pig. All right. So 
inquiring minds need to know at this point is that what is that fair or would that have be, been considered cheating somehow to because it wasn't his but who cares i mean a pig is a pig I, isn't it i mean yeah. or no yeah i don't know if that would have been cheating or not really because it was a pig right it was raised on the farm right and basically you know since we both did swine and we you know he did cattle you know he worked with the calf and you know we both kind of worked with the pigs although that pig that won the reserve grand champion let me tell you because at the fair, you know, I don't know if you've ever, you've probably been to the fair and you've oh, sure. the livestock. Oh, so sure. So you see all the pigs in their little pens. Oh, sure. That pig, I was very close to that pig. We would like, you know, I would lay in the hay with the pig and my head would be on the pig's stomach and people would go by, <laughs> oh, look at that. That's just so cute. Look, I can't oh. believe that he's sleeping there with the pig. Oh, and one of them's going to be bacon soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was very sad. Now, one year, though, I had a pig that was so tame that we never even kept it in the cage. It was mm. like a dog. It mm. was like sleep, you know, on the on the doorstep. And, you know, it never left the front yard. And we, you know, it wasn't fenced in at all. <laughs> you know, people would come up and drive up to the house and the pig would run out and greet him just like a dog <laughs> instead of barking. <laughs> <laughs> okay so now, now that we uh, somehow we've got onto state fair pigs or animals or livestock or whatever and you said you kind of you get attached to them i guess but you as a i mean as a kid as right a kid, tell me about that especially since i was probably sicklier right so i you know my brother played back you know he played basketballs and sports and did a lot of things but yeah, you, you got, you know, you got attached if you, if you really, you know, because sure. there was some people, not us, but there was some people that would, you know, like, I'm not going to give out names, but there was a, a certain family in the neighborhood that, you know, showed swine. Mm -hmm. They had a big, like we had hogs, but we didn't have like a big hog. I mean, we had maybe 10, 15, 20 right. hogs. They had like hundreds of hogs. Right. And we knew it and everybody knew it. They would wait just before the state fair because you were supposed to pick it out like at the beginning of the year. Oh. You were supposed to feed it. You were supposed to measure the food. You were supposed to measure the weight gain, all, all that stuff. That was part of the project. Okay. They would always go out in the lots of hundreds of pigs and they would find the best pig. And that's the pig they would bring to the fair. Uh-huh. It wasn't picked out at the beginning of the year. Like you're supposed to pick out the one that's going to be the fair pig at the beginning of the year. We're, we're, we're learning important stuff here this morning. But we all folks? knew. We all, we, you and I are learning. Family right. That never played by the rules. They had a, I mean, they were probably the biggest hog farmers in the county. And they would always go out and pick out the best hog mm -hmm. just before the fair just before the fair but when you so so <laughs> as a city boy i know nothing about i mean i know what a pig looks like i'd recognize one if i saw one on the street but that's about it as far as taking pigs to the fair and the county fair and all that so my question is if you were supposed to so th then you would pick one out and like you said you had to measure them and weigh them all the time so you could keep track of this stuff and you would show these records or these documentation at the fair is that how that worked yeah okay but and then know, they could budge that say okay well it weighed this much and we did right this. right nobody i mean they've been around them. hogs long enough that you know they could fudge it with no problem right right and so when fair time came how what do they judge them on just over just size no no okay uh it's length length and you know like i, I it's been a long time since i've been a kid believe me okay i, I we know that we know but that. it was something the way the back was shaped you know it make if as long as it didn't dip or you know it was like <laughs> they, they would always run their hand over the back and then of course another big thing right were the hams that's the back hams. legs hams yeah, the, that was that was like that was a biggie in in the in the judging. Okay, and that's about as much as I remember. 
Okay. Back, but I remember, you know, the important part was how the how, how long they were in the back, and the hams were like very important. Okay, so that's and then, how of you. Of course, would... there was also a showmanship class. Showmanship, which which I won too. What the rule was, you were supposed to take your pig out, had a cane in one hand and your back hand on like its back. Right. And you would never try to be between it and the. I mean, you would always want to have your pig in front of you. And the judge, and you would want to be behind your pig, showing the pig. And you know pigs. And you no, know I, I know don't. Pigs. No, no, I don't know pigs. <laughs> yeah, they don't really learn. Like, okay, I'm being judged right now. I, so you had, you know, you had kids chasing their pigs. You had kids running down their pigs. You had like, you know, okay, people trying to, you know, stay between them and the. It was, it was very humorous back in those days. I do believe. Okay, but that's one year too. I also got showmanship. Wow. Wow. But, you know, so, you know, my pigs were probably pretty well trained, though, because like I said, I was a mama's boy. I was sickly. So, I mean, you it were there. kind of like a pet to me. And so I remember every year at the fair, especially that reserve grand champion. Right. We had to sell it because, you know, you'd always get good money at the fair, you know, because people would know. No, bid on it, no you know? I don't know. BJ, well, most of the people listening to this podcast probably do not know. So feel free to fill us in here. Okay. <laughs> like all the bankers and all the real estate people, right. And all the people with big businesses, even though I was from a small town, so there wasn't a whole lot of people with big businesses, but like the guy who ran the drugstore, they would all go to the auction the last night of the fair for the last Friday night of the fair. Right. And the champions, they would want to. They would want to bid on those championship, you know, animals. Right, because they were because they were for sale. They were for. I yeah. mean, you sold. You would, them. You right. would go okay. to take okay. them to the sale. Okay. And so I mean, a hog that was maybe back in those days worth you know like thirty eight cents a pound. Thirty eight cents a pound. Back in back in the fair days, right? You might get somebody that would bid up anywhere from three to five to six dollars, maybe even seven if it was like a really, you know, per pound. Yeah. How much did your championship pig weigh? I can't even remember, but it was like probably 140, 160, somewhere in wow. there. Wow. Okay. But, you know, it was like the big thing was the, the, the big, you know, the big companies wanted to bid on the, the champions and then sure. And they always got their name and their picture. Sure. And paper <laughs> because, you know, they, <laughs> they bought their grand champion barrel. They bought the reserve grand champion barrel, whatever. Right. So, you know, they would, you know, get their picture taken with the kid, with the animal. And they did the same thing with calves. Wow. They'd get their picture taken, you know, and, it, you know, it'd be in the face. I don't know. No, you, this is all my, new to me. So it's my, my parents knew that my reserve grand champion would bring a lot of money. Okay. And so That's good. They were farmers. They, they raised pigs and they sold pigs. And that was, you know, that was the lot. That was a life. Uh huh. There was no really pet pigs except for my pigs would become pet pigs when I took them to the fair. Right. And I did not want to sell it. I cried and I cried and I cried. And they said, that's the reserve grand champion. You have to sell it. It's going up for auction. It's going to make it. And they gave the money to me. It's oh. going to make a lot of money. Right. So you need to sell your, 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 your grant. And I did. I cried and I cried, but we sold it. And I, I don't know, I, I made, you know, I don't know what back in those days, but, you know, when you're a kid and you get anything over $100, you thought you were a millionaire. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So, wow. See, look at that. I'm starting to tear up. Just He's remember, tearing up right now, folks. That's amazing. <laughs> I remember That's selling amazing. my little reserve grand champion barrow. That's amazing. That's a, so that was like a regular thing. And then I, I don't, does, does grand champion bacon taste better than regular bacon? I don't know, well, but. But now this is now I remember this too as a kid. Okay. Because a lot of times after you sold it to whoever you sold it to, then they would take it to the butcher. And then, you know, back in where I was from, smaller area, you know, country area, the butcher actually sold meat. Sure. So they would actually advertise the grand champion cow, the grand champion barrel, the reserve mm -hmm. grand champion, and they would sell that meat. Right. At a premium price. And people go, oh, I got to go get that meat from the reserve grand champion. I got to get that <laughs> meat from the champion cow. I, I, don't under, I don't understand. I mean, that makes sense. I get that. What I don't understand is why, as a business person, why I would want to buy 
the champions. I mean, unless I'm the, the one taking it home to eat it, that might make, I mean, that's it. If I take it to the butcher and then it all goes <laughs> into my freezer, then that's good. Oh, oh, look at that. He's got a pig. He's got a little model pig. Yeah, that's kind For of what it looked who, like. Yep, yep, yep. My so it, it was in. just it was just a community thing to do. It was just it was just kind of like well, I good, mean, good they, corporate they, relations. Obviously, they sold the, you know, the butcher bought the cow from or the pig, whoever right. bought it. Right. But they usually had to buy it at market price. Right. But like I said, the main thing was if you're a business, it, you know, like, you know, it's like anything else, you know, you advertise on, you know, you advertise on the podcast, you advertise in the newspaper, <laughs> local radio it, station back then. Yeah, yes. It was a, it was a way to advertise like, Oh man, the state farm of uh, Madariville, they, they bought the, the grand champion hog. They're good people. <laughs> Go was, buy a I car from know. them. I can't yeah. explain all of it. I was just a little kid. You're believe me, you've, you've already told me and probably 99% of our audience more than we've ever known about county fairs and pig growing and and pig whatever you do with them after the fair. I don't know. So but, thanks. We appreciate the insights there. But because I mean, I what's that? I was just gonna say probably some of my old friends from you know my farm days that are still in Indiana, right? And maybe they've taken over their daddy's farms or you know their granddaddy's farms and they're still farming, but yet they know like the Odom family. Right. If they're listening to this, they're probably telling he's got nothing right. He's got no idea what he's talking about. Probably but, not. You know, it's as a kid, this is the part that I remember. Sure, 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 sure. And that's all of the well, that's another st subject for another day about what you remember and how usually wrong it is, but it doesn't remember. It doesn't matter. It's your memory and we're sharing it now. And we, we appreciate that because I go to the, I go to the state fair in Tampa almost every year. I just enjoy it. It's fun to walk around and, and I don't, you know, it's not like I'm playing the, you know, the, the, the fair games to win any stuffed animals or anything. I'm not, but I do walk around and I do, I do walk through all the the animal, you know, whatever they happen to be barns or stables or, you know, pig pens or whatever, whatever, whatever. I mean, the Florida state fair for those who've never done it. And if you're listening out of state, you've probably, you know, you don't know what I'm talking about, but they do a terrific job of showing you, I think as a city boy, I wouldn't, I don't know about city boy, but I'm not, I'm definitely not a farm boy as a, as a non-farm person like myself, they do a great job of showing you the animals and, and farming and how important that is. Like, you know, no farmers, no food. Sorry. Um, like the little, the, they have the moo eternity ward where they show live cattle being born, live calves being born and all that sort of thing. So it's amazing. It's, it's, and cool. And like, all right, now I feel a little closer to, you know, farming and where that my food comes from and I can appreciate it and all of that stuff. So good for you. I, that's cool. That's very cool. And that's like, even though it was a small town, you know, th there were people like, you know, not, you know, really city people, but they, they came from the town. They, they had, you know, jobs in factories and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, 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 the fair, especially the Indiana state fair, as you talk of state fairs, right. It had conservation booths. It would, we had, I remember there was always a big tank and it would have like bass, you know, these big bass and, you know, cool. all this other stuff in it. And it would, you know, explain, you know, conservation, Right. And, you know, they would have all the, the livestock and yeah, it, basically probably every state fair throughout the country is probably pretty similar. Cause even yeah, when it, when you think of New York, you think of New York city, but there was a lot, you know, in, in Northern New York, there's a lot. Oh, of yeah. right oh tons, tons and tons. And tons. I, it's funny because I'm, you know, as, as everybody who's ever listened to the show knows I'm originally from Cleveland. And I don't think I ever went to the Ohio State Fair. Now, of course, it was in Columbus, which was a long two-hour drive. And it's not that long, <laughs> but it was a two-hour drive. When I, you know, when when you and I were in, you know, Fort Myers and all that, it was an hour up to Tampa to go to the Florida State Fair. And when I lived in Arizona, when I was working on the radio stations, several radio stations in Phoenix, Phoenix was the state capital, so the state fair was literally downtown or at the fairgrounds, so it was easy to get to. So I. Been to the Florida one many a time, been to the Arizona one many a times, never Ohio, which is kind of weird since I was born and born and, you know, raised there. So maybe I need to look that up and figure that out. But yeah, state fairs are cool. I mean, they're all, like you said, they're all basically the same. They show off the, the places and, you know, like 
I don't know if um, I know Florida does it, and I'm pretty sure that Arizona did it. You know, they had a big barn where they'd have every county would have their own little, you know, booth and stuff like that. Talk about what they were doing. And it was it's just cool. It's just a little Americana, I guess, is the way to put it. It's just Americana. I believe when I was a kid and I I didn't move to Florida until I was around. I'm get, I think I was around 28, but I'm not for sure on that. Mm-hmm. 28, 30, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, my wife's correcting me. She said, now, how old was I, dear? You don't know either, so. I did, and we couldn't hear it, so it didn't matter. But, but she didn't know that. I said, well, how old was I? And she right. didn't know either. But nonetheless, every year of my life, I think I went to the state fair. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, I I never showed anything at the state fair. And I think that's too, because I was sickly and they were worried about me. And usually when you took livestock to the state fair, right. You actually stayed in the barns. Oh, wow. The kids would sleep in the barns, even at the, at the local county fairs. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids would sleep in the barns. Wow. But wow. You know, like they'd have a cot, you know, it wasn't like they slept with the animals. (laughs) But I mean, they had a, you know, they had cots right. they'd set up and sure. I don't know. It just, I guess it was just part of it. You know, you're, you're, these are your cows. These are, you're showing these cows. And so I never, I never got to stay all night. Never yeah, but my brother all always did. Okay. And that's why he would get to go to the state fair. Cause it was, you know, usually a week long and right. You know, the parents wouldn't go up there for a week and hang out. Right. But you know, you you while the while your animals at the fair, you have to take care of it. You have to feed it every day. You have to water it every day. Right. You know, when I was at the county fair, your parents could bring you every day, and you could do all the things that you needed to do. Right. But you know, like I said, if you're at the state fair, and your parents aren't going to go up there for you know ten days, and so yeah, you would you know you just hang. I don't know if they had little dorms or not, but I know I remember at the county fair. I mean, there would be kids that had little cots set up and everything at the at the foot. You know, like. They have all the, the, the calves, you know, lined up, you know, and they're all facing the same way. Right. And there's like the boxes where they put all the lead, the, the, the leads and everything, you know, to, and canes to walk your, your animals. Right. And then there was usually like cots and stuff there first thing, but they always tore them down before, you know, the public would come to, cause they'd go down those aisles to look at yeah. the Yeah. Who well, knew? You're learning a lot, aren't you? We are. This is just, I, I find it interesting. And I hope the folks at home do as well, that it's just, you know, it's memories of your childhood, obviously. And, and, and that's interesting, but I mean, the whole thing, it's like, cause we're so, I mean, we're so disconnected from where our, this is kind of philosophical, but it's true. We're so disconnected from where our food comes from and all of that. We we just, you know, you go to Publix and there it is. There's the bacon in the package or whatever. You know, one of my favorite old Facebook bumper stickers was, you know, they always talk about growing your own food and everything. And it's like, I don't even, I don't even know where to buy bacon seeds. I mean, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so I get it. So yes. I mean, do I want to watch? animals being turned into hamburger no not really but i understand that there's a process and and i understand that it takes real people doing real work to take care of that stuff to make sure that when i open my fridge tonight there's a ham in there or or there's bacon and eggs in there or whatever and that you know i have that so blessings to all you farm people out there and people who take care of the animals and the crops and stuff that feed us every day it's just thank you for your service as we say this is what scares me because like I said, I was raised on a farm and you know, like I said, because I was sickly, I wasn't mm-hmm. in the fields a lot. wasn't with the livestock a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that was always my dad and my brother. And, you know, during planting season and harvest season, we'd always have a couple hired hands that would help out. Right. So I was very seldom in the field. I mean, everyone's wanted to be in the fields for, you know, a few hours, you know, mom would maybe take lunch out there and, I'd hang out there and watch what they did. Right. But the thing that scares me, and this should scare everybody, and Florida is a prime example. Indiana is a prime example, really, because my dad did this. We had a big 800-acre farm. Right. My dad finally, you know, well, he passed because we cash rented it. That meant another farmer farmed it, and they rented it off of us. Right. Paid you for the land, for the use of the land. the, my my brother and I decided, you know, when he started becoming sick, that we were going to 
you know, even though it was supposed to be handed down from generation to generation to generation, that's the way, you know, they believed back in those days, especially sure. my dad, like, I'm going to give it to you. You're going to give it to your kids. You're going to give right. it to their. Of course. Well, we, we ended up selling it. Okay. Did your, just question, just sidebar question. Cause I know I'm, I, you, I mean, we know, we all know your son, <laughs> our boss Gentry, and I can't really see him as a gentleman farmer. So that doesn't really work. Did your brother have kids that, that could have gone, that could have taken the farm? He had a daughter, mm -hmm. but I don't think. Don't think she, she was interested. Have. Yeah. Okay. I don't think she was interested. Because times change. I mean, like you said, in the old, old, old days, and I'm really talking, you know, like a hundred years ago or whatever. Yeah, it was passed down, passed down, passed down, passed down. And so you and your brother were the last, the last owners of this property, of this, of this farm. Yes. So then what happened? So we sold it, but we sold it to a corporation. Now I will admit the corporation, and this is what they did. They bought a lot of land. I mean, they bought our farm. They've bought farms throughout the area, right? This corporation. So now, you know, because really to be a small time farmer anymore, you know, you got to buy like, you know, $8,000 tractors. You got, you know, equipment that, you, so like now these big corporations own farms. Right. And, you know, they, <clears throat> they, they buy the big equipment. And of course, you know, they, but they might be farming 2,000 acres. So, so that's still good. But now when you think about Florida and a lot of these orchards, like especially oh, yeah. the area that I'm in, yeah, developers oh, sure. are buying all this land. And so there's going to be a day. I mean, there, I mean, I know they grow them in other countries too, but there's going to be a day where you're, it's, it's going to be hard to find a Florida orange because right. all these, you know, orchards, Right, basically been selling off to developers, and there's not. I mean, if you'd have came down here 50 years ago, there in Central Florida, oh yeah, that's all it was was orchards. I you remember it? I remember it. I mean, we weren't here 50 years ago, but we were here 40 years ago when you would drive from Fort Myers if you decided to take the adventurous way, and you drove from Fort Myers to Disney World by going up. What was that? Route 27 up the middle of the state through Sebring and all of those places. Just miles, 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 miles of, 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 of citrus groves. And like you said, nowadays, well, for better or for worse, they're, they are more valuable to plant houses and northerners in those on that land than it is to plant oranges. I understand that. But you're right. But, Florida but loses those houses a lot of, yeah. don't produce food. No, they don't produce food. They they consume food. So that's you you're right and there will come a day there and you know not not in the next couple of years but probably soon enough that there like you said there will be no more fresh from Florida when it comes to oranges because now, they're I, just cheaper to grow elsewhere. Now this is exciting and probably with you being a guy who reads a lot and you know the, the um the world is changing also. They're, I mean, they have a lot of farms now that are like, they're growing without a lot of, so well, some of them are growing without soil at all. Right. And they're like stacking them, you know? Right. And so, I mean, now there's like warehouses that are growing food. So in a way, maybe that is going to be the new trend. The farmers will slowly. Right go out but you can't but you can't grow anything big like orange trees you can't grow oh yeah that's, you can't yeah, do that yeah you can't you can't do that you can, and you and you sure as heck can't grow cows and pigs in a in a in a in a warehouse stacked well i don't know maybe they'll figure that out who knows but you need land for some things you're right i mean if all i'm growing is i shouldn't say if all if i'm growing like strawberries or broccoli or green beans or whatever you're right i could probably do a lot better stacking them up you know 10 high in a warehouse and then just spraying them with water and fertilizer or whatever they need and yeah they'll figure that out too but you're right you do lose some of the history and some of the tradition and a lot of that stuff when it comes to i i get it i i do i understand and it's it's a tough question it really is so you know it's uh, much more technical today as it was much more technical, but everything is everything. So yeah, I get it. I get it. But hats off to you farm folks out there. Cause God knows that, you know, with my new, my, with my keto 
with my keto carnivore diet, I am using your products every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beef and bacon and butter and eggs and all the good stuff that real farmers make on real farms. I am consuming that and enjoying that and loving that. So again, hats off to people who are actually out there in the fields, actually doing the work. Love you. And it was hard work too. I remember, man, my, uh, especially during I, planting season right? and harvest season, my dad would go out with sun up and, you know, they had lights on the tractors, you know, as you know, oh, yeah. time went on and heck yeah. there's nights he wouldn't come in till 10, 11 o'clock at night and then be back out there, you know, at five o'clock in the morning again. You may, and we can, we're just about halfway through. So I, I, I got one story that I'll throw in for my side of things. And you may have heard me in the old days, either on the air or privately say another day, another 1750, $17, 50 cents, another day, another 1750. When I was a kid and I'm talking 12, 13, 14, I lived in New Jersey and I, I had like five years in New Jersey. I don't know, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade in that area. And a friend of mine, one summer break, says, we're going to get rich. And I'm like, oh, great. How? And he's like, we're going to join. There's a farm down the way. We could ride our bikes to it. This was New Jersey 50 years ago. So you could literally ride your bike to it. Um, and they go out every day with the migrant workers by the truckload. And they pick apples and they pick peaches. And yeah, apples and peaches mostly. And so we would get up at dawn to ride our bikes to join a crew of, of a, a busload full of migrant workers who at the time, I didn't speak, I still don't speak any Spanish, very little, but, you know, all Spanish, of course, um, in the field, 10 hours a day, picking either apples and peaches, dumping them into gigantic bins and taking them back to the factory, 10 hours a day, $1.75 an hour. Another day, another 1750. That's Bill's story of his farm life. And that's, <laughs> and I did it for a summer and I made a lot of money. And I thought, never effing again. <laughs> so, but it was quite the experience. Another day, another closest, 1750. I think the closest my son ever got since, you know, he was four when we moved to Florida. Right. But he'd go back and see his mother. And uh, you'd almost have to be a farmer to know what I'm talking about here uh, with corn. He detasseled one one summer at his mother's. Yeah, I, think he, I think he detasseled for about three or four days. He goes, okay, my farm life is over with. <laughs> and that's where you chop off the top of the corn. Right. And I don't understand it, but that's somehow how it, you help it. I don't know. It's kind of like, it's it's like a way you you made it or something. I don't okay, know. Okay. You're, you're talking to, again, you're talking to a city boy. You could detasseling corn. I don't know. That sounds like something you do at a, at a, at a bachelor party. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> I, and I should, and that's what's sad. I should know you should, what oh, it means. It's been 50 years, big fella, 50, at least 50 years since we have been in that previous life. So you, you know, your memory, whew, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Look at that. A half an hour spent talking about pigs and farming. Something <laughs> something one of us knows zero about and something the other one, well, he's got some experience, so it's been interesting. Cool. Green Acres is the place to be. <laughs> Warm living. <laughs> See, and you still remember that. You still remember that, don't you? <laughs> All right. Well, folks, go make some bacon and eggs. Thank a farmer, and we will be right back. In a fast-paced world, every day brings new challenges and new opportunities. At Strayer University, we know a thing or two about getting and staying ahead of change. For over 130 years, we've been providing students like you with innovative tools, customized support, and an education built to empower you. So you can find your way forward and always keep striving. Visit Strayer.edu to learn more. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver? 
I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At ChumbaCasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome back to the BJ and Bill podcast. Get in touch on Facebook. Just do a search for BJ and Bill podcast. Or email us at BJ and Bill Podcast at gmail.com. I'm Bill Stevens. That's BJ Odom over there. Welcome back. Last week we were talking and we didn't have an answer for it. That, you know, how that podcasts are grouped by kind of big categories. And I looked us up and on Apple Podcasts, not making this up, I'm looking at it right now. On Apple Podcasts, the BJ and Bill, the podcast is listed under society and culture. <laughs> I know, right? I Who know. Who was drinking when they did that one? <laughs> I society and culture. So I have no idea what that means, or that must that's kind of just the catch all. Though we don't know what the heck this is. So we're just gonna put it into some big big broad category somewhere. So I should I wonder what like you know, the big name, like Joe Rogan or something, or is, or is under, well, he's not on Apple Podcasts, so I don't know. I'd have to look he us up. Be. Oh, I should I look us he... up on Spotify too. Yeah, we're on, we're on all of them, and and I don't know, maybe we have different different titles for everyone that we're on. I have right. no idea. I'm gonna I'm bringing up I'm bringing up Spotify while we talk here, and I'll look us up. It is now that remember we tried to get you know who Miss Alexa to um, find our podcast, and she never could. And that's on Apple Podcasts. It's BJ and Bill. The, the podcast or so, yeah the podcast or something like that so so yeah it, it it makes a difference or i don't know if it makes it well it makes a difference to your smart speaker for sure so yeah yeah so everywhere but us and you know we actually started all this with not being aware of anything right but we are listed as bj and bill the podcast yes yes and and on and here i am looking us up on spotify and there we are, BJ and Bill, the podcast. So yes, it's exactly that. So I don't see any cat. I, oh, I better follow it. Now that I'm here, I'm following us on Spotify. So there you go. Um, I don't really see a category on this one. I just see they have the about. And then it's basically our intro, you know, who remembers the BJ and Bill show all those years ago, um, which is what we've done. You know, that's what we use for our podcast intro. So there you go. So there we are on Spotify as well. BJ and Bill, the podcast. So you might want to, if you're searching for us, you might want to keep that in mind to make sure you find us. And that, well, that's it. Should we try it with, you know, who with, with our virtual assistant over there? Uh, you can, if you would like. And I, I know, um, you know, our, our, our favorite lady that you're getting ready to talk to. I'm holding her in my hands as we speak. She will usually play the latest episode. Now, I did yes. that one day, and it started playing an episode, and it was like the first episode. But then it started going backwards. And Well, I guess there was no other ones to go, but I guess oh. she knew nowhere else to go, so she went backwards. And I, but when I listened uh, to us on um, her, yes. or not her, but I mean on apple podcast uh -huh. uh, and then when it's over with it'll go to another podcast that i have you know because i follow like four or five podcasts yeah me too it'll just go to another podcast the latest episode of whatever i whatever else i listen to well make sure you're make sure that you are following us or that you is it, i think it's following on both spotify or apple podcasts wherever you get your podcasts make sure you are following us and that way it'll work so all right, one time, just one time. I'm not going to, we're not going to go crazy with this. Alexa, play BJ and Bill, the podcast. Getting BJ and Bill, the podcast from Apple Podcasts. Here's the latest episode, BJ and Bill, the podcast EP. Hey. Is she playing it? She's playing it. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Yeah, now to get her to stop, that's a whole, that's, that's, a, that's the whole, whole once you get them talking. And boy, am I going to, I'm not going to get myself in trouble with the ladies by talking about that. So I'm just not going to do it. So there you go. I'm going to save my, <laughs> save my, wait for it, bacon and you know, keep moving. I don't know if it's because we were talking about bacon earlier. Now you're hungry. No, but I swear. Oh, 
Now, now we had two eggs uh, left and they were like expired by about a week. So she was going to make eggs for the dog. But I also, I'm smelling bacon. So I'm wondering if the wife is doing something out there with bacon later today. Maybe that's going to be lunch. I don't know. But I, dear, is that bacon? That was my little pet pig. Thanks a lot. Now I'll start crying all over again. I hope you're happy. <laughs> so apparently bacon is on the menu at the BJ Odom household later know, on. She today, said it was my good. little pig. That way I won't touch her. Bacon. That was mean. That was just cruel. That was I'm going to touch her bacon. I don't care what pig it came from. <laughs> you're my wife. I'm touching your bacon. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Woo. All right. Calm down, big fella. Mm. You know, speaking of weird topics that we have to talk about. Yes. Being a heart trans recipient heart for 20 years. Yes. You have a very low, you know, your, your, your immune system is low. Right. So a problem that I've had really for the last 20 years are little skin cancers. I was going to ask you about that because for those who don't, well, nobody has it on video except for me and BJ, but he's wearing like this little glove kind of a thing, kind of like a half glove, like with the finger, with no fingers, but, you know, covers his hand, covers his paw there. So tell us what's going on with that. Uh, basically, this is something brand new. And I don't know, maybe it's been around for a long time because, you know, we've moved like three times in the last, right. you know, five years. So I have a new dermatologist. Right. Now I've had on the, you know, with cut everything the one i had last would cut everything which i didn't like that at all so i had to change from him <laughs> but this dermatologist she gave me a cream and it's got like some chemo in the cream and it also make it makes it kind of blister up right because she said the cancer that i have is on the top of the skin okay now normally i would have one dermatologist basically just cut it just cut it wide open with a razor you know whatever they used it a scalpel yeah. or whatever and no thanks and sew it up had another one that would do it like a scrape thing right they wouldn't really you know it wouldn't need stitches but they would like scrape around the area so it would take off the top layer of the skin right and then you know you'd bandaid it for you know maybe a couple weeks and then it would be you know starting to heal right well this is like a cream i put on there twice a day okay and it's doing kind of the same thing, you know, the scrape. But what I like about the scrape, and I think I'm going to tell them next time, because they said, we can either use the cream, I can scrape it, excuse me, mm. or I can, you know, cut whatever you would prefer. And I said, well, I've never done the cream. Let's try the cream. Okay. But I think since I got to do this for a whole month, I think in the, in the future, I would rather prefer, okay, just if you can just scrape it off the top of the skin. Right. Let's just scrape it and let it you know, kind of be like a big sore for a couple of weeks okay. instead of have this cream on there for the, and why don't month. you like the, because you don't like wearing the glove or what? Well, no, because I mean, I could have it anywhere. I've got one on my leg. Oh, I've okay. Got one on my chest that I'm doing this with too. Oh, wow. Which the one on the chest is always covered. The one on the leg is always covered because I never wear shorts. I we're have the worst gonna, legs in the world. We're just going to call one, you patches. Uh, but this one, because of the dog or whatever, you know, I, I don't want the dog to lick this stuff because probably it'd kill it, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. Not Burn good. the tongue right off of it. Right. So I, I leave this glove on because she does like to lick every once in a while. And this one kind of keeps okay. away from licking. But, you know, I could if I wanted to. I didn't, I don't need to wear this glove. Okay. But I just kind of. How long have you been wearing it? Uh, I've been using the cream only for about a week now. So I've got about oh, okay. three more weeks to go. Okay. Three weeks to go. So how is, I mean. Can you tell? Is it working? Is it doing the job? Or I don't know not? if it's working, you know, but I mean, it oh. is doing the blistering around the area. So yeah. I would say, yeah. Yeah. So much <laughs> fun. You're, you're just, you're like when, 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 when you are, when you have made your transition to the next world, BJ, somebody somewhere, some doctor or group of doctors is going to write a, your case study and it's going to be like, it's going to require like three volumes thousands of pages your story you know all the stuff you have gone through it's all good i mean it's all you know it's like it's gotten you to where you are you know to be with us today which is amazing but 
you're you know there's always a new chapter to your story here of what's going on it's interesting it's sad in a way because i have so many things going on because when people post on facebook right and i mean i get it and, and i'll say a little prayer for them but like i'm doing this today right give me a little prayer right you know i'm i i, I i'm going in and doing a stress test right you know give me like buddy you don't need no prayer for your stress test it's when they <laughs> cut your chest all the way open start playing around in there and changing out parts that's when you need some prayers <laughs> so i i think it maybe has made me cold i don't know but it's like sometimes i go man he's because oh i'm so worried i'm so worried i gotta do uh, i'm so worried i got it's like like a heart cath. I've had, I have a, I've had a heart cath every right. year for the last 25 years. And I'm going, you know, and I, I mean, I don't type that on their pages, no. obviously. No. And I say no. the prayer because I know they're scared. Sure. Is, they're scared. S-less. Right. But I go, come on, yeah. buddy. <laughs> you Hold don't have to be that my beer. I, I, I can tell you. <laughs> You don't have to. Now, there are some, I shouldn't say that because right. there are some major complications right. that can happen with a heart cat. They can poke the artery accidentally. Right. They got to open you up right away and fix it. And probably now, next time I have a heart cat, that's what will happen because I went and opened my big No, mouth. no, we're not putting that. We're not putting that energy into it. You are, but, pro, you and, you are know, protected. It's just like I say, I'm just like when people like, you know, get all up and up about certain little procedures, I'm going, oh my God. Throw up air. Hold hold my beer. Yeah. You think you got problems? Hold my That's beer. just another day at the office for me, buddy. <laughs> I saw I I saw that clip. I don't remember what movie it was, but it was like some, you know, some girl talking to some super villain bad guy. You came in, you wiped out my village. I'll never forget, blah, blah, blah. And 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 he's like, I don't remember that. When was it? You know, what are you talking about? And she goes, yeah, for you, it was the worst thing that ever happened. For me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, to, the long story short is, yes, a lot of, and I see that on Facebook sometimes. And I think, I think you just look, I think you're just trolling for, for sympathy here. You know, it's like, you know, you're not going for a heart transplant. You're not going, you know, you're not doing the BJ Odom story here. When that happens, all right, let me know. But like you said, if you're just going for something basic and it's like, all right, I get it. Fine. You're just trying to get a little sympathy, but good for you. Whatever. Maybe I'm being heartless in my old age, too. I don't know. But I guess what I guess and maybe it's an advantage of mine. Little procedures to somebody who's perfectly healthy and never had a procedure at all. It's nerve wracking. Right. But like I said to me, just like the joke, you know, hey, it's just. Just another day, another day at the office to me. That's right. Right. Well, you are a professional patient. You are a <laughs> professional. I mean, you know, some people just do it as an amateur, like whenever they get around to it. No, you are. You got your monthly schedule. You got your 50,000 mile checkups. You got all of that stuff going. So, yeah, I get it. You, I mean, you, do, you, do you probably the doctor's office is where you go. You're probably first name basis with everybody. You know, you're probably like bringing them cookies or something, or they should be bringing you cookies. Now, now I will admit this. I've had, like I said, I've had a heart cast probably for the last 25 years, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when I go out, when I walk in the hospital, I'm not nervous when I'm sitting there getting ready. I'm not nervous, but there's something about when they roll me into the room mm. and they put me on the table and I start going, I mean, I, the, the nerves, levitate slightly but they levitate right. the only thing that i really am concerned with in all honesty is give me the shot where i don't give two rats peepees whatever you do to me <laughs> but do that before you poke me in the groin to put the big hole in there just make sure you give me the and they and they won't give you the 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 good stuff the good stuff so the doctor comes in and says okay you can give him the good stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, but usually when the doctor walks in, it's like he's ready to roll. You know, it's like all these people, you know, get you set up for your heart cath. Right. But when the doctor rolls in, 
you know, it's like, okay, lights, action, camera. Right. And I'm going, no, no, I want like, give me the shot. And then go lights, action, <laughs> camera. Yeah. yeah when don't it do all don't, kicks don't in. walk in and say light, action, camera. No, right. no, 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 no. Give me the shot first. Then right. start saying the lights. You know. The only experience I had with that was when I had my eyes done, when I had the laser uh uh the 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 which call it the 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 cataract the thing replaced yeah yeah what's that the cataract cataract surgery laser cataract surgery and they gave they gave you the good drugs like the hour before and you're laying there on the and really when when they're as they're wheeling you in it's like okay time to go and you go oh okay that's fine let's go have fun you know it's like wow whatever they gave you that was the good stuff so yeah, now, I, I remember that. I do. Now when but, I had my um carotid artery, yeah, I had to have a stent put in there. Woo. And so when they did that, they actually the you know, the doctors came in and explained everything, you know. Right, right, right. You sign your little life away. Of course. You, know, you sign your consent. Of course. Then he goes, Here, we're gonna give you something just to take the edge off before we take you down. The edge off. I like that. And 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 as they rolled me down. And they rolled me into the room. You know, usually if you'd roll me into the room, that's when I would start, especially since I'd really never had carotid artery, you know, anything done to that before. I would have panicked even more than I usually do with a, right. with a heart cat. Right. By the time I got to the room and they put me on the table, come on, baby, do whatever you want to. I don't care. <laughs> I'm Superman, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's, there you go. But I yes, you that are... stuff is, but it's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if i was to ever be a drug addict that's where i'd go that's the stuff whatever that whatever that was that you gave me that's the stuff i want yeah no i all right it's you know boy here we are <laughs> two old guys talking about medical procedures again here we are okay Whew, well we could be talking about vasectomies but heck i was a young lad back then <laughs> i was a young lad back then we both had that one we both i had that in fact that's when i lived in arizona when i lived in phoenix and yeah that was whoo Boy, I must probably just uh, late twenties or something like that. I don't yeah, remember. I was, I was probably yeah. like early early thirties, probably. Yeah, 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 probably early thirties. Yeah, and I'm going. 30s. I don't. Oh, I don't. You know, you can cut on my chest all you want, but I don't want you cutting down there. <laughs> hey, a mouthful of coffee, and it almost <laughs> ended up all over this microphone. Yes, yes, but again. The, the good drugs, whatever it was, the good drugs. I remember at the time I was married, of course, and my then wife, uh, 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 shout out to Paula. Uh, my then wife remembers, she told, the, told this story constantly for the, a couple of years after that when she came to pick me up afterwards to meet me in the, because they, they're like, it's going to be a couple of hours, you know, uh, you want to just go shopping or something. She said, okay, she went and, you know, came back for me and I'm sitting in the waiting room waiting for, and she said, he was so happy. He was like bouncing around like, Oh my gosh, how is he doing this? And I said, and she said, and then they told her what the drugs was that I had and said, yeah, he's not going to be like that forever. So then, you know, you go home and you lay in bed and the drugs were off and you go, Ow. <laughs> so, I, I, yeah, I tell this quick story. And uh, the wife is probably listening in the other room. Then she's probably going to come in and belt me any second now. Uh Oh, uh Oh, but her parents, I don't want to say they were goody goody, but they were, you know, me, I'll let anything, of course, not on the air, not on the right. podcast, but you know me, I'll let anything fly out of my mouth. Sure. It doesn't bother me. Right. Well, of course, they always wanted me, she wanted me to always be somewhat, you know, hold the line a little bit when I was around them. Oh, sure. Sure. Don't, don't be edgy because they right. are, they are more, you know prime or not prime, yeah i get they're it more I proper it. all right proper good word so she gets a colonoscopy i am there her mother and father are there right and they roll her out from the colonoscopy still a little you know loopy or whatever you might want to say yes and they come rolling out and she goes why don't you just jump in this bed with me right now? And let's, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to say what the words might have been or whatever, but let's just say that's not normally her. <laughs> Behavior. Said, 
That's and unusual her, behavior for and your her wife. Parents yes. Are both yes. right there of all things. And I'm like thinking, and you don't want me to talk anything? You don't want me to say anything around them? <laughs> Yes, I can. I can imagine BJ will be heavily bandaged when we see him next week, folks. From his <laughs> wife will probably take but a two by four but, to him. But it was pretty funny, and that was in one of those stories we talk about every once. There you go. There you, you go. You gotta have. You gotta have those dog stories. barking in the background. I heard him a tidbit there, but not too bad. He's fine. He's fine. So yeah, there you go. They're, they're doing something in the. Get out of here, dog. They're do- <laughs> they're doing something in the neighbor's house. I think they're putting up gutters and so. Okay. Oh, so I, he's he's uh, alerting the neighborhood that there are people outside. Yeah, it's, I guess he's so. doing his job. He is doing his job. That's all there is to it. He gets so. paid way too much. I understand. I understand. Did I tell you or have I mentioned that I... In a world that's constantly changing, you have to move forward to change with it. At Strayer University, we see you striving to work harder and go further. That's why we provide you with the tools you need to get there, like offering a brand new laptop when you enroll in a bachelor's program. So you can do your coursework anytime, anywhere, because our greatest strength is helping you unlock yours so you can always keep striving. Visit Strayer.edu to learn more. Eligibility rules, restrictions, and exclusions apply. Connect with us for details. Hey, guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. I have a, I've been given a dog sitting job of my own. That no. It, yeah, late. Wait a minute. April, May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into June. Uh, late May, early June. Our friend, Miss Vicky. You remember Miss Vicky up in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Uh, she and hubby are going to a family wedding. I think it's in Alaska. I think it's like oh, somewhere wow. way the hell out there. I know way out there, but anyway, yours truly is going to go up and live in their beautiful little cabin up in blue Ridge, Georgia to dog sit just for a week or 10 days or something like that. So at least one, maybe two of our shows will be recorded with yours truly in the, uh, in the beautiful uh, mountains and woods of blue Ridge, Georgia. So I'll report on that when the time comes, but we got time there. So that's fine. But yeah, we just were negotiating that this week about my going up there. So little dog sitting job, dog sitting. You know, I have a friend of mine, speaking of the Blue Ridge Mountains, who lives up in the Blue Ridge Mountain that is not Vicky. Mm-hmm. It's another person. Mm-hmm. And they're getting ready to have their 70th birthday party. I think Miss Vicky knows them because they were from Fort Myers originally. Oh, or she lived in Fort Myers originally. Okay. And are they in Blue Ridge, Georgia? Because I mean, yeah. the Blue Ridge Mountains are a big place. Oh, but well, they're, they're in the town. Blue Ridge Mountains. So I could be wrong. Where, there is a I, little town called Blue Ridge and it's yeah, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think they're from Blue Ridge and the Blue Ridge Mountains. I think. Interesting. Interesting. So she's saying, I'm having this birthday party and I would like to invite you and I'd like for you to maybe do a toast, you know, sure. And my birthday party. And I said, yeah, if I'm feeling good and I, I'm well enough, I'd be more than happy to do it. And I'm looking at the wife and I'm going, because she's texting me this, okay? Right. I go, oh, this person I used to know in Fort Myers who lives up in the mountains uh, having a birthday party somewhere in the next in the coming year. And they want to invite me and you, and they want me to do a toast. I said, that will be so cool. I, had, I, I want to, you know, go up in the mountains. Right. And then a- after I explained this to my wife, the text says, yeah, the party is going to be at such and such in Port Charlotte. And oh. I'm going Poor Charlotte. I mean, I like Port Charlotte. Don't get me wrong. But I was getting all excited about going to the mountains. But no, but it, I'm going to Port Charlotte. <laughs> Tallest mountain in Port Charlotte is the is the recycled dump. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Again, nothing against Port Charlotte. We love you. But yeah, it's just not the mountains. It's totally different. So I understand. I get it. I get it. You like food. Is it like, you know, somebody tells you you're going to have, you know, a sizzling steak or whatever. It's like you're. You're all ready for sizzling steak. You're ready. And then, like three seconds later, the sizzling steak becomes a McDonald's hamburger. You know, it's just, yeah. it totally changes. <laughs> totally changes the vibe. Well, <laughs> have fun going to Port Charlotte. That's all I got to say. So I like I Port, Port Charlotte. I've, I've again, done comedy shows in Port Charlotte. But yeah, again, I no I was big deal. Go to the mountains 
where I never get to go. I thought this was like, okay, this is going to make me have to go to the mountains. There you go. Well, I will be there in early, late May, early June. So I will oh. let you know. I'll, I'll post some pictures for sure. Maybe so I should, you, uh, you know, go up and make sure you're okay. You know, you could do that. You could do that. I, you know, it's Blue Ridge is from, from, from my plate. Cause I'm an, I'm a couple of hours North of you. It's about eh, six or seven hour drive. It's not insignificant, but it's, nowhere near as bad as it was from Fort Myers, which was like, you know, a 10 hour drive or something like that. So yeah, it's not bad. Then of course you get, you get the fun, you get the excitement, you get the, you get the both hands firmly on the wheel excitement of driving through Atlanta, which is just, it doesn't matter two o'clock in the afternoon, two o'clock in the morning. It doesn't matter. It is wild and crazy. It's like Mad Max driving through Atlanta, you know, and, and, I have done this many of times. I, you know, like I'm going somewhere and I need to go through Atlanta. I will find a route. It might take me two or three hours longer, but heck you can get stuck in traffic for two or three hours in Atlanta. Yep. I will do whatever I can. I don't care if it's two lane roads. I will like look at the map and go, okay, I can take this. I can do this. Yep. I can do that. Right. I don't go through Atlanta. The last time I did, I, uh, it probably cost me, I mean, literally physically cost, but probably cost me another five or $6, but I took the express, you know, the, 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 the carpool, it's not a carpool lane because they let you, you can pay to, you know, drive on the fancy, what I don't know, the carpool lane. I don't know what you call it, but I did. And it helped a lot. It helped a lot to get through town at, at the busy time. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it, it did help. So yeah, you know, again, like you said, you could either drive the two lane backwoods through, you know, rural Georgia somewhere to avoid the big city, or you can slug it out with the traffic or whatever, but it's not. Yeah. I hear you. Just, just, just don't be there five o'clock on the main road, you know, on oh. I 75 going North. Cause you will be there all day. All and I'll night. tell you a place people, if you travel a lot and probably you know about this, also, like, you know, every once in a while, I'd like to go to Indiana. Right. You know, so I can go to the county fair. <laughs> county fair, of course. Uh, and um, another town that anymore is like just crazy to get through is Nashville. Really? Nashville has become just, I mean, you get to Nashville and you're on the interstate. It's going to be stop and go pretty much hmm. all the way until you get on the other side of uh, Nashville. I'm guessing a lot of these cities that are experiencing big time growth. And I mean, you know, Atlanta has been the big time growth forever, but like you said, Nashville, some of these places that maybe you hadn't thought of that are just now starting to catch on the, the, the highways and byways are probably not keeping up with the population. I mean, well, look, look, look where you live. You live down there by Orlando where it's like wall to wall anyway, and you moved just to avoid the traffic. So I hear you. Yeah. We, we are now North of I four. Right. And we can get to Disney without going to I-4. Uh, we did need to do something the other day where we had to be on I-4 for a little bit. And I'm going, Ooh. oh, my God. Ooh. And I looked for another way home and I found it. <laughs> so I didn't have to get on. But, man, that is brutal, too. Yeah. Anywhere between uh, actually anymore, uh, Haines City there uh, where you hit 27. Yeah. It used to only back up, you know, as you've got, you know, maybe a couple miles from Disney. Yeah. Now you're backed up all the way, you know, past 27 a lot of times, all the way up through Disney. And then it kind of clears out for a little bit. And then when you get to downtown, it's the same thing all over again. It's oh, like yeah. You down down Orlando? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. It is kind of great, which I'm. Not looking forward to that, but I might be actually uh, in your neighborhood, not your exact neighborhood, but I have a friend that I might be visiting in uh, in Altamont uh, coming up this week. And that's the, the problem with traveling from Gainesville to Orlando is there's no direct route. You have to go down 75 and then you go you can go across on the turnpike if you want. And you can that costs you 10 bucks too to get into Orlando. Um there's no direct route from Gainesville. I mean, yeah, it's on I-75, but uh, and, Orlando, and nowhere near. I think 441 to 27. I mean, there Again, are ways you can do yeah. it. Yeah, 
I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking for those BJ Odom back roads. That's for sure this week. So yeah. Because Altamont, it's kind of busy over there. Too. Now that's now that's just, just North. I mean, not North, but that would be just East of downtown Orlando. Yes. Yeah. These but it's be a really again, cool bonkers. They used to be that? a really cool bonkers comedy club in Altamont Springs. I used to always love working in that room, but I hate, I hated driving to it. I mean, we were in Fort Myers, but I loved working it. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up on the hour. Look at that. This hour has flown by. Well, that's what happens when you talk about county fairs and pig raising, I guess. It's just <laughs> one good memory after another. <laughs> Next time we'll talk about moose hunting. Mo uh, moose and, moose never, and squirrel. Moose and I've squirrel. Never, <laughs> I've never been moose hunting. I just, no, that makes two of us. I just thought no. I'd throw that out there. To see okay, what, thanks. What the Great. reaction would be. I saw one Man. in Arizona once. He was as big as a house. I mean, it's what I remember. I've never but... seen one. Well, wait, maybe I, I uh, nope. I don't think I've ever seen one. I'm now, have you ever sure. seen Buffalo? Now I've only, I've only seen them on the other side of a fence where they were like, yeah. you know, but I've never yeah. seen one out in the wild. No, I don't know. Now, where would you say? I mean, I've never been to North Dakota or, or South Dakota or Wyoming or whatever. I'd like to, but I've never been to those places. So that's on my bucket list for sure. So maybe that's what we can talk about next week. Maybe we'll talk about a little bucket list kind of stuff or something like that. Well, I got a bucket list. It's a mile long, and I don't think I've gotten. It's like the grand prize game on the Bozo Show. I don't even think I've gotten past bucket number one yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you check something off your bucket list this week. Go out, make it a great week, and we will see you again next week. Same time, same bat time, same bat channel. But until then, it's just up to Mr. DJ Odom to say, see ya! The first step to reaching your full potential is having the courage to start. At Strayer University, we help students take action by making higher education more affordable with access to up to 10 no-cost gen ed courses. Because our goal is helping you work toward yours. So you can always keep striving. Visit Strayer.edu to learn more. No-cost gen ed is provided by Strayer University affiliate Sophia Learning. Eligibility rules apply. Connect with us for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.